The Netherlands is one of the lowest countries in the world. 26% of the land area is below sea level, and almost 60% of the country is only just above it and is therefore at high risk of flooding. And that is exactly where the country's largest cities and the regions in which 80% of the gross national product is generated are located. Rising sea levels therefore pose the greatest challenge for the Netherlands in the coming decades. Multiple forecasts show that several regions of the country could be completely submerged in water in just a few decades. But smart as the Dutch are, they already have a solution for this too. There is probably no other nation that has so much experience in building dams and flood protection systems. In the past, it was even possible to get entire parts of the country out of the water. And so several Dutch scientists were commissioned by the government to come up with an incredible plan to solve the problem of rising sea levels once and for all. The construction of the largest dam in history. This is to cut off the entire North Sea from the Atlantic in three sections, once between France and southern England, once between Scotland and the Shetland Islands, and finally between Shetland and Norway. This could save the lives of over 25 million people near the coast and make the North Sea a lot safer. And the scientists are extremely confident about their project. Since the North Sea is only around 100 meters deep in most places, such a project would be quite realistic to implement. The costs would also be kept within reasonable limits if they were shared between the applicant states, which is why the project could actually go ahead. So it's high time we took a closer look at this mega project. How would the dam look and function in detail? By when could it be completed? And how could it change Europe forever? We take a look at all these exciting questions in today's video. The Dutch have already shown in the past that they have extensive experience in blocking the North Sea. They built the so-called Afsluitdijk over 90 years ago. This sealed off the North Sea over a length of more than 32 kilometers and subsequently enabled the largest land reclamation project in history. The Netherlands thus created a completely new province out of water. And if that was already possible in 1933, what will be possible today? The Dutch government probably thought the same thing when it commissioned the Royal Netherlands Institute for Sea Research to find a solution to the flooding problem a few years ago. However, no one in the government had expected the mega-project that the team led by leading oceanographer Sjord Grosskamp was to present in 2020. Because the scientists were not proposing the construction of larger dams off the Dutch coast, but wanted to close off the entire North Sea. To this end, they launched the NEED project. This is the abbreviation for Northern European Enclosure Dam whereby the North Sea is to be completely cut off from the Atlantic in three stages. The first section is located between the Lizard Peninsula in Cornwall in the south of England and the municipality of Pluiscat in Brittany in France. The length is exactly 161 kilometers, with the sea there having an average depth of around 85 meters and a maximum depth of 102 meters. Groskamp immediately adds we are currently able to build fixed platforms at depths of more than 500 meters, so such a dam seems feasible. Because the other two sections, albeit deeper, are also still within this framework, the second causeway would then run from the Scottish mainland through the Orkney Islands to the Shetland Islands. This section would have a total length of 145 kilometers, with the deepest point at 110 meters. And then we have the third section, which would be by far the biggest technical challenge of the entire Need project. Because this dam would connect the Shetland Islands with the west coast of Norway over 331 kilometers. While the seabed is fairly flat for the first 210 kilometers, it sinks to 321 meters off the coast of Norway. That definitely makes it more difficult but not impossible. International experts also agreed shortly after publication that the plans appeared theoretically feasible. I think it depends on what time frame we're thinking about, said Hannah Cloak, 
professor of hydrology at the University of Reading, for example. If you look back hundreds and hundreds of years, we have made some significant adjustments to our landscape. And the Netherlands is an example of that. We can do amazing things as humans. If you look back to the 1940s in the UK, the Thames barrier probably seemed just as ridiculous. It depends on what happens in the next 20 to 30 years, how bad it gets. And then we might need something like this, she adds. The team around Grosskamp also agrees that it would not be a short-term undertaking, but as the largest infrastructure project in the history of Europe, it would be a generational project that would, of course, also be very costly. The team's calculations indicate a construction period of at least 20 years, although other experts estimate even longer periods. The team estimates the costs at 250 to 500 billion euros. Over 20 years, the annual costs for the 14 countries that would be protected would amount to just over 0.1% of their total GDP, they calculate. The costs seem particularly low when compared with the costs of damage caused by flooding. To give a German example, the flood disaster in the Arthol alone cost around 40 billion euros. And in the Netherlands in particular, there could be several such tragedies caused by flooding in the coming decades. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change predicts that if emissions continue their current trend, an increase of 84 centimeters can be expected by 2100. However, the Dutch dams are only designed to cope with a rise of 40 centimeters. The government has therefore already warned that the current dams will only provide sufficient safety until 2050, which is why new solutions are urgently being sought. And so she also has high hopes for the further development of the NEED project. Because the dams could protect not only people from the Netherlands, but over 25 million people in 14 countries who live up to two meters above sea level over the next few centuries. Although the construction would also have numerous disadvantages, the biggest would be the massive impact on the environment. Professor Peter Herman, professor of ecological hydraulic engineering, describes it as nothing less than a catastrophe. The 30,000 cubic meters of fresh water that flow into the North Sea every second will turn the sea into a freshwater lake. At least on the surface, deep troughs would remain salty, but would no longer have oxygen because there would no longer be any tides. This would impair the circulation of sediments, nutrients, and small marine organisms, the basis of the food chain, with massive consequences for the environment, animals, and humans. In addition, the dam would of course also be a ticking time bomb, because just one tiny hole would be enough to put the whole of Northwestern Europe out of action, a perfect target for anti-European dictators or terrorists. And Grosskamp also admits that there would of course be consequential costs, such as the loss of income due to the lack of North Sea fishing. However, his team warns that the costs and consequences of not taking action against sea level rise would ultimately be many times higher. It continues. According to the gloomiest scenarios, a rise of 10 meters is predicted by the year 2500. This dam is therefore above all a call to do something about climate change now, and this is also how the report concludes. The only alternative would be to prevent a further rise in sea levels from the outset. This can only be achieved through the immediate implementation of measures to mitigate climate change. If we do nothing, this extreme dam could be the only solution. And so it also becomes clear that the dam will certainly not be built in the next few years. Everything will depend on the measures taken to combat climate change in the coming decades. However, if sea levels really do rise indefinitely, we will certainly be hearing more about this massive mega-project.